One of the hardest ideas to understand about hypothesis tests is power. To understand power, let's quickly remember what our process is in a hypothesis test. We are assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Then we are taking a sample and seeing what our results are. If our results are really far from the results we expected if the null were true, that indicates that our assumption was wrong. The null hypothesis is not true. It's false. But if our sample results are not all that far from what we expected from the null, then we don't know. We don't have enough evidence to say the null hypothesis is false. We're not saying it's true, just that we don't have evidence to say it's false. But what if, unbeknownst to us, the null hypothesis actually is false, and our study didn't give us enough evidence to reject it, to say it was false? Then we have, unconsciously, ended up with a type 2 error. We have failed to reject a null hypothesis that was actually false. This can happen in any study, and the researcher never knows if a type 2 error has occurred. But we would love to avoid those errors, right? We would love to avoid any errors. Power is a measure of probability. It is the probability that in the study you have designed, you will avoid a type 2 error. We often express it as a percent or as a decimal. For example, the most common power is 80% or 0.8. But it's a bit more complicated than just a percentage. Think about the situation we're describing here. The null hypothesis is false. Whatever I think the parameter is equal to in my null hypothesis, it's not. But how far is the true parameter from the one used in the null hypothesis? If the true value is really far away from the one in the null hypothesis, then it is much easier to realize that the null is, hypothesis is false. You don't need a very large sample to do it. But if the true value is different from the null, but they are close, then it takes a much larger sample size to have any chance of correctly determining that the null is false. Think of it like your morning coffee. Let's say that you, and millions like you, all want a cup of coffee in the morning and you all like your coffee with two spoonfuls of sugar. Now, I'm a barista, but a wacky barista who decides to run a study on my customers. So when you come in and order your coffee with two spoonfuls of sugar, I put in the wrong amount of sugar. And I wanna see how many customers I can serve that way before there is an 80% chance that at least one of you will notice the difference. Say that one day I decide that instead of two spoonfuls of sugar, I am going to put in 12 spoonfuls. It will only take two or three, or maybe even only one customer before someone is going to notice, right? I mean, 12 is so much more than two. Your face is going to pucker up and you'll be all like, or whatever your favorite sound of disgust is. There's a huge difference between the null hypothesis, the two spoonfuls that you are assuming you're going to get, and the true value, the 12 spoonfuls you actually get. Easy to tell such a difference, and it won't take many customers before I can confidently say there is at least an 80% chance of someone noticing. Maybe I'm a little bit less obvious about it. This time, I am putting four spoonfuls of sugar in each cup. Now how many customers will it take before I can say the probability is 80% that at least one person will notice the change? The null, two spoonfuls, and the true value, four spoonfuls, are a lot closer than they were, but still pretty far apart. Probably with a dozen customers, I can safely say that someone will notice the change. It's a bigger sample needed, but still not that big. What if instead I put in two and a half spoonfuls of sugar? Now a lot of people aren't going to notice the change. I might need a hundred customers before I can say that there's an 80% chance that at least one person will notice the difference. The value in the null hypothesis and the true value are getting close enough that it takes a much more sensitive tongue to tell the difference. Finally, what if I put in 2.05 spoonfuls of sugar instead of the expected two? This is so close that most anyone won't notice the difference. I might need a sample of a few thousand customers before I can say there is an 80% chance that anyone will notice the change. The null hypothesis, the assumption that I am using two spoonfuls, is false. But the true value, 2.05 spoonfuls, is so close that it is nearly impossible to tell the difference. So in that example, I was testing the power of the human tongue. But the power of a hypothesis test is very much the same idea. The power of a test depends on how big a difference there is in the value of the null hypothesis and the true value. 
It also depends on the sample size. Or when you're designing an experiment, you go the other way. You choose the power, say 80%, and you make a guess about how much of a difference there is between your assumed value and your null hypothesis and the true value found in the population. Your sample size depends on these. The smaller the difference, the bigger sample size you will need to detect that slight difference. So now, when you get your morning cup of joe, you can nod and say, ah, the power of a hypothesis test. And if you see me as your wacky mad scientist barista, you might want to find another coffee shop.